Hello and welcome to another Friday Faction Focus. And today, Tom, we are covering the Necrons. Yeah, we thought, I mean, there's nothing going on with Necrons at the moment, but it might make it quite popular to sort of talk about. I, I don't yeah, know where definitely. <laughs> yeah, before any sorts of announcements, obviously, we're going to have to put this out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Necrons obviously have been released as one of the major races now in uh, 9th edition. Um, and had a fantastic new trailer that's came up mm. to introduce the ninth edition, and lots of new models have been yeah, some fancy new stuff. previewed in, uh, and the storyline is moving on a little bit for our robot friends. Indeed. So, Tom, we are going to start this with uh, a bit of background on who the Necrons were, mm -hmm. and then I'll go into who they are. We'll go into uh, how they perform on the tabletop, your experiences uh, playing against them or playing them, and then we'll go into a few more yeah. story-based bits. Mm, okay. So, uh, I guess you want me to start with some kind of historical stuff. Yeah, so on with the Necrons. Were they always known as the Necrons, Tom? No, 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 no. Okay, let's just go right back to the basics. So they used to be known as the Necrotir, and they were kind of human humanoid, would you say? I think roughly? Yeah, roughly. humanoid, kind of, yep. They had skin and flesh. You know, arms and legs. Arms and legs, all that kind of stuff. Um, and essentially, uh, they had quite kind of dodgy lives really uh in the grounds that they were kind of subjected to a lot of radiation solar i think the solar based radiation and stuff from where they were based i think it was yep. out in the halo stars if i remember correctly in that particular yep, yep. region of space and it was this is and by the way this is billions of years before even terror turned up kind of properly on man uh sorry mankind turned up properly on terror so this is this is well before anything happened yeah yeah, yeah. they were they were they were out there doing a lot of stuff a long time ago essentially um and then in their time, there was a there was a race called the Old Ones, um, which I don't know. Would you consider them kind of godlike in a way? Yeah. Like, well, sort of the stuff? Old Ones yeah. had pretty much um, been out before the yeah. Necrons. They were they were before Necrons. They had uh, worked out immortality. That's something they'd yeah. they'd been quite good on. They'd worked out how <laughs> immortality it's a works. Good skill. It's a good skill yeah, to and have. for for instance, the Necron tier, yeah. obviously, as you said, they had um, issues with their lifespan. Yes, they had rather short lifespans, yes. and to find out a race um, has mastered immortality, they were, quite, they were quite attracted to that particular trait. I think, from what yeah. I understand. Yeah, and anyway, so obviously, as they had short lifespans, um, I'd use this analogy a minute ago, which is basically obviously anyone who's familiar with Lord of the Rings, obviously the men of Gondor, like you know, towards the end of their kind of period, they they preferred to build really elaborate tombs and monuments to the dead and the necrotier were quite like that in a way because they just they they prefer to celebrate their dead because it's kind of like they're everyone was going to die pretty quickly so why not make it all kind of nice for the for the people to remember you know remember them by in the, and that kind of thing um so obviously they went for that period of time but there was a point when they decided you know what we're going to come out and try and change their fortune so to speak um and you know, and one of their things they were trying to do is obviously defeat the old ones. This was one of their biggest things to try and do. And and obviously this war started off pretty, you know, probably pretty brutally and went on for ages and ages and ages. And it resulted to the, I think, now I'm trying to remember if this is correct. Did they get the help from the Catan first? Uh, no. no so no. Um, yeah, no, they they decided yeah. that waging war would be a good idea, especially yes. after they asked the old ones. You know, what are your well, how do you become immortal? Your the old ones, Your old ones, are like ah ah ah, <laughs> ah, ah, ah in, in yeah. the magic words. So, so, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so they had this war going on, and uh, it wasn't going well for them. And then yeah, the Satan or um, uh, yeah. appeared. Because essentially, yeah, there was a period. So basically, they they fought the the um, uh, the the old ones quite a bit, and it, I think this also resulted in a creation of a couple of the races during this particular time, which actually the Crocs otherwise now known as the orcs although a much lesser race of the orcs really in comparison so i think you have to think of the kind of the beast level of orcs that these orcs were you know they, they even had a, i think they had a little touch of intelligence in there as well if i remember correctly to start with back then yeah uh, and also the eldari another race that they kind of yeah and these were done actually to try and prevent the neck the necrotier sort of becoming too powerful i think in 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 a nutshell um Obviously, if Idic Beer is watching this, I'm sorry. Um... <laughs> Time to butcher some law. Um, but it's a, so just to, to move it forward a bit, obviously, then there was a, thing, a period of time called the War of Heaven, uh, which is obviously, I think, when the Catan were mainly involved. And, you know, they kind of, 
they 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 said to the necro you know necro oh we can we can help you out with this all immortality stuff you know we can we can give you some ideas on that one and they were like okay well what's the you know but they didn't kind of they weren't particularly forthcoming with what this actually meant <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so they, they kind of they kind of obviously i think they agreed to this to say yeah we want to live forever we don't want to die that's our main purpose you know and we wanted to defeat users powers to defeat the old ones you know all this kind of stuff um so uh, essentially they went to, to the Catan and essentially set up this process um biotransference i think is the correct uh, yes, term yes that is um, correct in a thing called bio furnaces now i don't know why there wasn't any alarm bells ringing at this point because they well, there probably were alarm bells going <laughs> but i think Desperation. the uh, bio bio furnace <laughs> probably made a louder noise yes exactly <laughs> Um, and it, it, essentially, they, they started basically putting all their people into these things to try and to get this all immortality. But what they didn't realize is that when they came out, they were basically stripped of their flesh and bones and all this kind of stuff. And also even their souls were essentially forfeit for this uh, great power that they were going to attain for being immortal. Um, and yeah. Uh, and so essentially, after that point, they became this force as, as known as the Necrons now. Um, and they were obviously extremely powerful for this particular, even, even Tom. Few, yeah. So I've got a quick question. Yeah. Uh, on reflection, on reading the uh, about the bio uh, furnace. Yes. Um, obviously, you know what the what it entails. Now, would you quite happily step inside the bio <laughs> furnace, <laughs> become a necron, or would you probably think otherwise about doing it? I wouldn't. I wouldn't go into it. You wouldn't. No. What if I gave you um, fifty pounds Games Workshop vouchers? Well, I would. The way I thought you'd think about that is that'd be very nice, obviously. <laughs> However, I think when I came out, I probably wouldn't really want to spend money on Games Workshop vouchers because I wouldn't really have the need to. Uh, or, or, okay, or all right, no, I just, I just need, like to know how much you appreciate the hobby. <laughs> But, but I want to it. enjoy the hobby, and, and, and the way I'd look at it—it's you know, take vouchers <laughs> for bio transference. <laughs> I'll make sure I will put that on your next birthday list, though, if that's uh, if that is an option for yourself. A bio furnace or uh, games that well, could do both. You're like a two for one. <laughs> okay, yeah, cool. That's good. Oh, no, sorry. Carry on. Carry no, no, on. No, your... that's, that's fine. Um, so anyway, so now, although obviously the, the Necrons were kind of fooled by this i think that the site the the original silent king obviously before you is a sar sarek sarek is that uh sarek, sarek as yeah. i would pronounce so it. he was kind of um he was kind of onto them in a way but he was so desperate for the immortality he kind of let this happen and he had a plan that basically once they had attained all this they were then going to essentially stop you know kill well kill enslave the Catan. I think that's probably the better way. Of yeah, I, yeah, yeah. The laws kind of changed a little bit over time, yeah. but um, yeah, essentially, obviously, the Catan were like um, star gods, so yes. they would eat eat stars and devour. Oh, yeah. Also, um, about going through the bio furnace, yeah. um, it's it's good to to note that the Catan obviously were devouring. Oh, because they fed on it, didn't they? That's right. Yeah, yes. yeah. So they loved it. They 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 obviously had a. Yeah. Because essentially um, they were using that, and and obviously the Silent King before he was the proper Silent King was essentially banking on the old ones to become so powerful that they could wipe out the old ones. Yeah, so I think that's yeah, basically yeah, they, that's how, they could wipe out the old ones. Yeah. Exactly. And then, but in the background, Sarek was obviously going right. Well, we don't want these Satan getting too out there, you know. So once the once the the old ones kind of demise have been assured, he essentially started binding the Catan shards, which is kind of where they were stored, so to speak. Uh, their powers were sort of uh, so he bound them in tesseract labyrinths yeah so he yeah, yeah destroyed them and put them in labyrinths so he issued an order 66 and <laughs> yeah, uh, that's it, yeah. essentially all his necrons <laughs> just turned on the satan and um yeah blew them blew them up to little bits yeah. but obviously being star gods they, they weren't going to stay little bits forever and yeah. uh, you can't really kill them so yeah they basically yeah, captured them in little yeah. little balls and they, and they essentially became glorified gins like the genie yeah. in a bottle kind of thing. So they, they and, then, and then obviously the Necrons use them for their gain. Um, mm -hmm. And then after all this has kind of happened, they kind of won this war, and I think they kind of had enough, and they said, "Let's have a sleep." <laughs> in a nut, in a, in a kind of a very roundabout way, and they, essentially they pretty much went to sleep in elaborate tombs that they built on all the planets that they currently inhabited. Um, and I think they even went to as far to make the worlds almost look dead. 
so that other people that yeah. came to view came to it, them they, would go don't worry about it. this is a dead world we're not interested in it so in so that way they could survive this uh well i think from what i said it's about 60 million terran years kind yes. of undisturbed yeah. having a little snooze ready to sort of yeah. come back and that kind of brings us to the next step i think um, yeah, yeah so um yeah it's a good point no, m mentioning also they went to yeah. sleep and i think part of what they went to sleep is because you had the aldari still kicking about and obviously the crocs were about doing their stuff so the old ones are essentially defeated stana gone and lots of necrons had died during this and the eldari was still kicking about and so the silent king obviously went well if we go to sleep eventually they'll die and all the psychonauts <laughs> will go away and we'll be back to take the empire back um yeah so then uh you know uh 60 million years later they start waking up slowly um, unfortunately, over 60 million years, Tom, as we know firsthand, um, the worlds change. There's mm. things that happen. Some obviously must yeah. get sucked into black holes. You've got earthquakes on some, some flood. Uh, uh, other races or the lesser races come in and <laughs> investigate the tombs. And, yeah. uh, so, you know, poor old Necrons, they've suffered a little bit and they slowly start waking up. And uh, a lot of them probably wake up on a nice empty planet got all the time in the world they can just gradually you know put on their slippers check the paper make a cup of tea <laughs> slowly sort their planet out others probably not so much they will they wake up on planets with um uh uh humans or with orcs or whatever and and have to fight some ongoing survival. conflicts <laughs> yeah 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 and a lot of them like they've got a bit of a rebooting issue so Mm. All sorts going on with them. So then it's not really the, the grand unveiling as maybe um, Saltek, uh, Sarek, sorry, um, <laughs> first thought. Um, so anyway, so they, they slowly start waking up this, they, and um, gradually become known in the galaxy. But the dynasties wake up. Some go out and find the lesser races. Like obviously, uh, mankind's now on the scene. They go to the planets to retake their particular empires because they're in dynasties. So the dynasties are a bit like houses, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, old, old, so, for instance, Mefrit, which we'll get into later, mm -hmm. had their own um, dynasty. Uh, Mefrit dynasties had their own empire, so they go and try and reclaim the planets. And a lot of them go to the planets, and some of them uh, decide that diplomacy might be a good idea. So they try diplomacy with the lesser races. Mm. Give them a bit of time to get out and move move on. Um, others go in going, well, essentially you're nothing, so we're just going to destroy you and we're going to... This is our land. Sleep yeah. Hook. <laughs> and a lot of this, like the Necron race, is massive, massive empire, massive powerhouse that hopefully we'll see in that ninth edition coming up. Mm. And the problem is, for a long time, they've been very kind of splintered. And as I said, they're... they're recovery has been quite staggered and quite laboured and so they haven't really been able to establish themselves as yeah, much obviously as quite funny because they built it as the great awakening didn't they and it wasn't yeah. i mean it wasn't that great i mean it was kind no. of like oh i'm i'm gonna get up now how about you No, you're still sleeping um yeah we're waiting for someone yeah. to come and disturb us actually that's what we want to do <laughs> yeah so some of them like the necron species in my opinion are, are very much very human-like in the way they approach things so some of them got grand ideas like they'll go and go oh well this dynasty how this um this tomb world hasn't quite woken up i'll tell you what i'm gonna go claim this world for myself and my dynasty others will go oh they haven't quite woken up i'll tell you what we'll go defend them until they're they're fully awoken and will form an alliance with them. So it's very it's not one rule. They won't go off and just no. do that. The, the overlords essentially still have um, person uh, personalities as such. So they're, they're kind of individual, rather than you have warriors, which are on the, the bottom end of the spectrum of them. So they're like the the peasants, <laughs> as it were, the the common citizens uh, citizens, and they tend to have no personality or very very little personality. Oh, yeah. It's also good to mention the triarch as well. For each of the yep. so this is a you know because obviously a triarch's made of three essentially um pharons, is that correct yep. Pharons, yeah yep. so and they, they tend to there's there's one who kind of like doesn't really show his face a lot and then the other two kind of are his yeah eyes, like, yeah like the silent ears, silent kind of, king yeah, kind of thing going thing, on yeah yeah stuff like um that. Yeah, so yeah, tomb worlds all over the place some wake up quickly some don't wake up and um uh, I think once a tomb world has probably woken up, 
you, whoever it is, mankind, for instance, are in a little bit of trouble. Mm. You don't really want a tomb world on your doorstep waking up. So a lot of them try and get in there early. Because I believe there's like a massive, when a tomb world starts waking up, there's like a massive energy surge across the galaxy. Uh, and people go, ah, there, there's a tomb world. Let's quickly get there before it's too late. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and technology-wise, they're very advanced. Uh, in my opinion, they're probably... Well, they do say most, they're the most advanced. They yeah, I would say they're the most, most advanced, advanced yeah. um, in the galaxy because they can almost teleport across the galaxy yeah. wherever they want to go. If, they, you know, a Necron gets... Um, killed in combat they basically teleport back to their tomb world and slowly get rebuilt mm. so it's it's pretty hard to defeat a necron as it were so i think we've butchered the law enough there <laughs> you sure Tom, yeah i think we're doing all right what's your ex have you had a experience playing uh, as a player of necrons as in me playing it personally no yes. i have not played necrons myself that is not okay. something I'd, i think you are more the expert on the playing as a necron player definitely yeah baby um but you've <laughs> definitely had experience both playing against myself and other people oh yes i've played so, I've played against necron so you know yeah do you want to do you want to get a little bit of your what what do you tend to see in a necron army um, and uh i mean obviously what are your tactics against necrons well yeah i mean this is interesting i mean it does depend on how that necron player plays his army but you know especially when i've played against you in the past um i mean before you had your current army you used to like your warrior blobs and reanimation you know and so a lot of warriors oh yeah 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 you, you remember this you had your little phalanx of like 40 odd the richards warriors. the richards square yeah the richards <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i remember being highly infuriated at trying to butcher my way through them because that's the thing that they were built to do and I, in my opinion actually back then i think that kind of symbolized them a lot better than how they how warriors maybe play nowadays because i think back then it was very much like I've really got to kill this warrior unit because if I don't, it's all going to get back up again and I'm going to have to kill it again. And I remember you had to sort of wipe it out to the last man. Otherwise, that, yeah, it, that that was it. Yeah. You had, you, you saw, oh, I'm going to roll some dice and up they get again. Um, obviously, I mean, you play a lot of, is it Immortals now? Is that yes. Correct? Yeah, with yep. lots of Gores weaponry. And I think you see uh, that. Tesla. Te sorry, Tesla. No, it's not. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. The Tesla. Yeah, no, it's, yeah. Too, it's a good yeah. point. It's worth defining yeah. both. Yes. You've got Gales and... Uh... Because warriors use ga gals, don't they? So, although you yep. never know in the latest one, late new iteration, they may have access to the other things. Possibly, we don't know. They had two weapons. Could mm, be they did. I think they're just or... two different. No, I think they're two different uh, gals ones. Unfortunately, yeah, okay. no, that's fair. Otherwise, yeah. I'd be getting them. Yeah, yeah, but um, but yeah. No, so I think, and so I think, their durability is a thing that you should. Do is one thing that I think I used to watch out for because they could always get back up. I mean, nowadays, I mean, obviously your current army is much more based on a lot of shots with a lot of additional shots being added from various abilities due to Tesla. And I think you see that. I, don't, I suppose you see it a fair lot. I, I don't know. I, I haven't. My experience really of playing Netcons is against you and I can only really go by what I've faced against yourself. And I know you focus quite heavily on Tesla. So, yeah. But, you know, but there's there's... I mean, Necrons can go either way, can't they? I mean, there's other weapons that are in there. You know, you got your uh, yeah. Doomsday Arcs, is that correct? With the big yep. cannons and yep. stuff like that. Yeah. But they, they tend to be whatever it is tends to be quite a brutal weapon. You know, in in that way, there's always it's always got it always packs a bit of a punch. Whatever it is, they have even the basic weapons. I find, um, you know, whether it's, it's exploding dice rolls or high strength beams of some description, um, and I think the normal way of dealing with them is you just have to kill them faster than they can kill you i think that's the way i would look at it <laughs> yeah 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 you're right you need to wipe the, wipe the whole squad yeah. out you don't yeah. want to leave one man left and a lot, one man a lot of shooting a lot of shooting i find they they are more shooty than combat based as well in my opinion that's how i would see yeah so that's kind of how i would look at it you know what yeah about yourself what about playing them i mean you've played uh i i, I tell you, yeah so I've, I've played necrons um on and off for, for years, um, so we kind of hinted on the uh, Richard Square, <laughs> my classic manoeuvre, um, and that was when the plastic warriors came out. I started playing Necrons back then, um, and I, I really enjoyed playing them. They're quite fun, um, but back then, actually, to be fair, they weren't as fun as they are now. They were a bit yeah. boring then. They, they, they had a very limited uh, um, units. Now they've got units everywhere, and they've got more units coming out, as we've seen from the ninth edition preview. Um, playing them currently, I do actually enjoy playing them. I find they're a very quick army. Um, 
which is quite odd, I suppose. If you look at them, you don't expect them to be quick, but mm. you suddenly put yourself with some annihilation barges, some uh, flyers, some wraiths, some tomb blades, and suddenly you're actually a very quick and mobile army, also with destroyers as well. Yeah. Um, my, the army I currently play for my Necron, so I've probably got um, three and a half thousand points, maybe. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, like you said, very Tesla based, lots of immortals. Um, I, I went with a theme and I didn't really want to have much gals um, or gauze or gals or gears or we Yeah, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Um, so I've gone with Tesla and I, I absolutely love Tesla because it's very easy to use. And the rules are pretty much the same across the board for every weapon. Um, um, but I have limited myself, obviously, by saying that I've, I can only really have Tesla or any of other weapon, not uh, gauze um, or gals. I'm going to keep going around in circles. Just, just carry on. <laughs> So, <laughs> uh, also, I have lots of um, wraiths as well. Wraiths are really cool. I love them. Um, they're very quick across the battlefield. They do take a lot of fire, though, because as soon as an opponent sees um, your wraiths, mm. they're going to be shooting them like about no them. tomorrow. I remember them being, uh, yeah, they're, they're one of my. That's what I count on, Tom. Hated <laughs> units in the Necron. It's just they just don't die. Because of their no. and vulnerable save, it is horrendous. <laughs> yeah, and they've got a few little tricks. Um, yes. I think Necrons in general uh, in 8th edition, I don't know what they're going to be like in ninth. Um, you tend to have a couple of tactics, and that is about it for Necrons. Mm. Like you have your Doomsday Arcs that go up, um, your Doom Scythes, and uh, Tomb Blades as well are quite popular. But that is lit- that is it. Uh, that is if you If you have a tournament army, that they are going to be the three things that you're definitely going to have in there. You might put destroyers in, but in my opinion, you've pretty much got those three things. Yeah. yeah um, which is a bit of a shame. But the model range is pretty cool. I, think I love you're, playing I think them. You're getting some stuff soon. I think. I think. You, I think you're going to have a big yeah. space. Of cool. I must admit, even I, I, I'm not really a huge fan of the Necron <laughs> style and stuff. You know, but I do. I was quite impressed with the new sculpts. I think they look pretty cool. So I'm actually yeah, definitely. It's piqued my interest a bit more than it was. So yeah, that's good. That's a, that's always a good a good thing from a, a new model range. They just kind of like get people who aren't necessarily that interested in it. Go, okay, oh, actually, it's quite nice. Mm. Um, what, I, what what I really liked about the army um, that I keep going back to is this whole idea of a legion. Like, there's a huge amount of Necrons under an Overlord's command, and they're all pretty brutal, to be honest. And I quite like that idea. Of just you know almost um just just robots going forward just loads of robots going in and just shooting and it doesn't matter terminator like, army. Not dead. yeah terminator i think more um droids um Ooh. but yeah not a, controversial not attack of the clone droids uh, yeah clone ones droids. that can't hit a lot of mine can't hit to be honest no, they are very similar. that's why they need tesla yeah um <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Tesla, more shots. Um, that's my experience playing Necrons, and I absolutely love playing these guys. I think they're lots of fun. Yeah. Um, so, we've done a bit about um, playing with them. Oh, sorry, um, playing against Necrons. Um, like I said, yeah, like you said, it's quite frustrating. You have to keep shooting as many as you possibly can. Um, and after you kind of, I think if you play an army, you can kind of see where it falls apart. So, you, yeah, you're definitely mm. trying to have a look and there's a few little tricks they have but generally you, yeah just shoot kill all units at a time that's the best tactic you can have yeah. uh and yeah like wraiths can be very fast so you need to try and if they're if they've got a lot of wraiths you really need to try and shoot them as quickly as something that gets in vulnerable saves as well would be good yep death hex yeah or null zone well if you're that close to them you're already lost <laughs> that is true. <laughs> that is true. Um, so yeah, we've done a bit about the the playing of yeah. and the playing against of Necrons. Let's go into characters, Tom. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, or do you want to go into dynasties? Well, I could do. We could just do the both. Uh, is, I don't know if the one you picked is it part of the dynasty you picked or not. Nah, mine is dynasty less. It's not uh, got a dynasty. Ah, okay. But... Well, well, you could. I mean, I can. If I go into the dynasty. And then, yep. and then I can put in my character on top of that if you want, because they're cool. part of the Yeah, all right, you go for your dynasty. It, it just seems, yeah, so, um, now, obviously, I don't, I didn't, we're coming into this, I didn't know a huge amount of Necron, about Necrons at all, really. I've actually learned quite a bit doing this little bit of research. Anyway, I, I, I picked um, the Nihalek, Nihalek, or Nihalek mm-hmm. um, dynasty. Um, so they can be, I mean, their armor style, they have a little, quite a bit of blue on their kind of shoulders and armor patching and that kind of stuff it's just it's a bit different than a standard kind of bolt gun metal style necron you mm. know um uh and 
they were uh, essentially their um their particular dynasty has they obviously they've woken up um and but they, they, when they've woken up they've decided not instantly they've decided not to go out and about and kind of interrupt the flow of things going on around them they've be, they've be, they've become very inward focused and they're very kind of um we're going to build on what we've got you know we, we we've got this here we're going to going to keep building on it we're not going to go and interfere with anything we're not going to attack anyone sort of unless we really need to to start with um and yeah and essentially on top of that they're quite a wealthy dynasty in the fact that they are as a as a dynasty they, they're kind of renowned of collecting vast quantities of relics wealth whatever all these kind of things uh artifacts from around that you know um because they they you know it's one of their way they measure their success i suppose and also to keep their history alive that uh, yeah they really yeah, yeah. so a lot of their their worlds have got massive vaults of stuff that have just been collected over the, the millennia um yeah. yeah do you reckon they have lots of velvet ropes uh, around Ooh. here um, i see I, I don't really see velvet displays. robes as a Necron thing. I don't know. Oh, ropes, sorry. Vel oh, ropes. Velvet ropes. Oh, yeah, ropes. around the I displays. Mean, yeah. Oof. Well, you mean just to keep people from walking up too close? Yeah, yeah. Stop people touching yeah. them. I think they'll use scarabs. I think they'll go for a more of a, a more of a instant death kind of protection. IT effect. Yeah, rather than sort of prevention. They go for, no, you got too close, you're dead. Yeah, that, that's that, that's how much they guard their wealth. I think that's a, oh, wow. fair, a fair assessment. I think. Um, okay. Uh, and just a little overview for them. So they're, they're I think their head fair on at the moment is Chris Heck. Chris Heck. Chris Heck. Okay. That's great. Um, and he's 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 also there's Amatech and Kipak are the other ones. Um, uh, all of them have had some notable clashes with various people, uh, like the Custodes for one. They've heard uh, there's quite a bit. Of, I, I, I believe the Custos actually won that fight, but it wasn't pretty, from what I understand. Um, there's also Tarek the Undying. Don't know if you've heard of this chap. Oh, tell um, me more. Well, he fought a lot of Eldari. That was his thing. Um, and hated he, enemy. Yeah, evil, quite. And the, the fact is that he, he's, I think, of recently he's not done very well, and he's been so out of all these leaders of this particular dynasty, he's kind of stepped back a bit, and he's now plotting his revenge against the Eldari. That's kind of... He's just sort of sitting there, sort of getting a bit broody, I'd imagine. Um, mm -hmm. If Necrons can get broody, I don't know. I, I imagine they probably can. Yeah, they get yeah, a, bit, yeah. a bit upset, yeah. Um, they've also... I mean, they're also renowned... I'm just, I'm just reading a couple of bits here because I can't remember all this uh, at all. But um, they've got the head of a seer, the Yith seer, um, which they chop the head off and they've kept the head, uh, but they have a way using their particular things with the katan and the energies and stuff like that they can access the powers of the seer to look into the future hmm. which is quite, which is obviously quite a useful thing to have yeah, um, yeah. and that, i think the most prized relic from what i understand is the time splinter cloak mm -hmm. which is basically a cloak made out of silvered crystalline time bits of time and it gives the wearer the ability to sort of look into bits of pockets of time and alter their destiny so to speak or their future or at least see what's going to come up so they can they can make alterations to, to sort of suit uh, to suit their outcomes and things like that um i suppose should i go into some of the rules for the army as well or i don't know that, uh yeah, if you want yeah you can you yeah can i'll just because obviously there or something. From a, just as a very brief overview i think from what i've read is they prefer when they're fighting they like to Go for that killing strike. They like to have, you know, they like when they, when they're shooting something, they want to hit it. That that's their thing. They, you know, and they're very stalwart and they 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 take aim, they fire, and they make sure they hit with the most powerful weapons they can at the the best points uh, stuff like that. Hence, so they're some of their like their main overall army rules. If a unit stands still, they can re-roll one uh, once a hit, things like that. So you know, yeah. it's quite a handy skill. And and their main stratagem is called reclaim a lost empire which is basically increases their saving throws and attacks by one if they stand still, which I think is to simulate this um, standing their ground and building on what they have, I think, as a dinner. I think that's probably the designer's thoughts, I would imagine, to try and make it yeah. look like they're, we're staying here, we're not going anywhere. Um, and I think, uh, yeah, so that's kind of what I've got on them, really. Uh, oh I'm right, not, okay. Did you want to do your dynasty first? I'll, I'll do my dynasty yeah. quickly. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, well, yeah, yours, yours is very detailed. There, I'm going to go into my one a little <laughs> bit. So, um, I've gone with uh, Mefrit. Uh, oh, I right. tend to run my Necrons as Mefrit as a side note. 
Um, so Mefrit, uh, first off, it's worth establishing a little bit about Necron race. Is they have like a code of war, um, and they have a bit like the art of war, I suppose, or a bit of uh, chivalry or whatever. Chivalry. So there's certain rules you have to be, you have to obey if you're going to be a Necron overlord in war. Uh, and Mefrit are kind of known for destroying suns and stars that is their thing they love big guns and they love destroying things and it's they're kind of seen as a little bit uh barbaric maybe or savage um for, for being able to destroy things like that not like for instance not giving a planet a chance to surrender i'm just gonna blow it up <sighs> gone they're like the ones who have a death star um i'll put all the stars <laughs> <laughs> Um, their their color scheme uh, is kind of still uh, sort of a bit of green, and their 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 gauze or energy is orange, so they kind of stick out a little bit from your other standard uh, Necron dynasties. Um, as for rules, they have a a rule where if you're within uh, half range, I think it is, with your mm-hmm. your weapons, you get an increased AP. So as I said before, I run a lot of Tesla in mine, and Tesla notoriously has no AP. Um, so it's quite good to get up close and to um, far away and get that minus one AP. Mm. Minus one AP when you've got you know a lot of shots going in can definitely mm. cause a bit of damage on your opponent. Um, so like a Marine three up save, suddenly a four up save if you've got like strength five weapon for instance with a minus one AP and you've got 20 hits you're going to be taking a few marines makes a difference makes a difference definitely um as for the stratagem I cannot remember the uh (laughs) code of annihilation I think it is or something like that sounds familiar or talent for annihilation so uh uh, basically it's a similar thing to um tesla or over six you get an extra hit um so you can use that above weapons so you could have that on your um Doomsday Arc or something along those and just get a little bit more on there. Um, I don't really use that strategy much. I tend to just use more of the Dynasty um, trait for the AP rather than that one in particular. So that's Mephrit. Very brief overview hmm. on Mephrit. Um, they're also, as, as, as power-wise goes within the Dynasties, they're, they're quite moderate. They're not quite up there. They've got a couple of planets under their control uh, and they've got a few sub-Dynasties as well. So, um, like I said, they're like houses, a bit like Game of Thrones, where you'd have your bannermen. Dynasties also yeah. have the equivalent of bannermen. So you'd have sub-dynasties that work alongside your, your overall dynasty. Okay. So, yeah, that's me for it. What about your character, Tom? Well, I'm sticking with my dynasty. So I oh, went with right. Trazine the Infinite, nice. um, who I'm now going to put an image of him up here, just so people can see his character model. Um. <laughs> So uh, you probably can't see this, unfortunately, John. Sorry. I've seen him uh, before. I can picture him. You can picture him. He's there. So yeah, I've got a, I've got a bit of information on him. I did a little bit of research. <laughs> so Good. he's he's essentially their chief preserver of histories and relics, texts, uh, all that kind of stuff. So he's and and it, that is kind of his life, really. He's also a little bit. I'd say he doesn't really. I mean, obviously, he's part of the dynasty, but he's a bit of a lone wolf when it comes to going out and doing these kind of things because he's he's all about. I want that relic. Like, yeah, I really want that relic. You know, or, 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 or that bit of tech. That is, we. I need that in my my collection. The klepto. Yeah, he he wants he wants things that aren't his because he sees value in them essentially. Um, so this goes to the point that if he wants something that bad, he'll happily muster an army, um, by any means possible. Uh, he'll essentially take it by force. He'll blow a planet up. He'll blow a city up. He'll destroy an entire sector whatever just to get hold of whatever this this item actually is yeah um now the other thing is he, he's he's got a reputation for loving his prismatic galleries um obviously he's got a, a several of his own ones his own kind of stasis area where he keeps his little collection um, now uh, before we carry on yeah he definitely has a velvet rope around these displays well, uh, um, and maybe a little plaque yeah. i mean his robe having a look at his picture it looks like it's made out of living metal yep <laughs> so Maybe they've got living metal ropes. That, Maybe that, uh, that stop people getting too close. I mean, it's yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> but anyway, in his, so just just to give an idea about how his style of collecting, it's not just artifacts and tech. He he likes to get kind of organics as well, like people, things that are quite rare or 
Uh, yeah, it's like us collecting Warhammer 40k, except he collects stuff from the 40k universe himself for real. You know, he goes, oh, quite look, quite like look at them. I, I want under them, and he'll go and put his order in by taking an army, <laughs> <laughs> so scraping them up, and, <laughs> and then and then sticking them in a in a, in a prismatic gallery. So just a couple of examples. He's got he's got some full Catachan regiments, all all there. Nice. So taken. He's got. He took an entire Tyranid fleet, from what I understand, which I think was the Inveras Tyranid, uh, well, it was on the planet Inveras or Sector. He took the whole fleet uh, that was attacking them and he stored them in a stasis. So he's got, you know, because everyone needs a Tyranid fleet. Um, Why not? Why yeah. not? And obviously, as you may know, he, he also had some Ultramarines from the Heresy era that he stored away for, for obviously quite an important moment, which we'll come into later. Um he also has a clone of Fulgrim, a perfect clone, which he traded for, fa- for using Fabius Bile for some gene seed that he had of the Emperor's children. Because obviously, you know, Chaos need gene seed. Fabius Bile likes a bit of gene seed, I understand. Yeah, yeah, he's, a, yeah, yeah, he's yeah. a bit of a collector in that particular thing. Um, and these things are basically forever trapped. Yeah, there's, there's not. Yeah, these things are like there's no real way of them getting out of here except by some happenstance or luck or you know something happening to affect the outside part of their stasis they can't sort of affect their own escape really from what i understand because they're essentially stuck it's not yeah um he's even got um i understand he's got like guard regiments that are 300 years out of date from the imperium you know you know so the uniforms are like dated and from back and from different eras which is it's just quite cool I like, this is one of the reasons i quite like the i like this he's he's, he's a bit different for a necron i think because he's got a you know I feel like he he cares about his collection. You know, he want he wants big eccentric. Yeah, he, he, he's, he's a bit different to what you would kind of typically see a Necron to be, I think. Um, which is um, yeah, and he doesn't doesn't care who ha- yeah, he he wants them essentially. Um, and just having quick, okay. and obviously he'll go through great lengths to get these things as well. Obviously, as I said earlier, but he he also uses a lot of subterfuge because um, he can essentially substitute his body for other bodies he can become another body that he wants and he can essentially enact out um I, obviously i know he can use is it mind flaying scarabs is that correct uh, mind shackle scarabs mind shackle scarabs that's one obviously to, to get people to do his bidding but he can also become almost a duplicate of a, of something else and act out he's done this even with with necrons as well he does it with necrons as well it's not just not just other races he's quite happy that if he sees another necron too well that's got something he wants he says oh well i'll pop in there and get that on my way home from lunch you know um <laughs> by by impersonating an overlord on the planet for whatever reason yeah you know? and essentially what happens is that if they get found out and destroyed he then essentially has a way to push himself back to where his body is or, or whatever you know he can do that quite uh, kind of at will so um and also the other thing is to, of his note is he's quite a paranoid chap as well um in a way that uh, you know he's always very suspicious of people trying to steal his shinies yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, I've got a few other points, but I'm going to leave that till when I go into my conflict um, as okay. well, because it. Kind of, although actually, there's one other one. Sorry, one last bit, because obviously, Thirteenth Black Crusade, which is obviously another mm-hmm. conflict. So I'm not going to go into detail of that. However, during the Thirteenth Black Crusade, obviously, people may know he was involved with some of the events on Cadia. Um, yep. However, his lovely collection that he had spent many, many millennia collecting. Um, Essentially, from what I understand, there was like 13 bell tolls during the crusade, which echoed around his stasis field uh, catacombs or prismatic galleries. And on the 13th toll, a lot of his stuff shattered. And this is what I'm talking about, where the only way that people could get out is from an outside influence. And the, such was the chaos forces that were gathered at this time. It sent a shockwave through his stasis, his stasis fields and stuff, and a lot of stuff escaped. Um, and he wasn't very happy about that, really. But there wasn't uh, really a lot he could do about it, to be honest, because it's a lot of, yeah. You know, when you collect all these really nasty things and nice things, and all this, uh, some of them get out and maybe want to kill the person that potentially <laughs> stole. You kind of head. feel his pain, though, don't you? If you if oh. you got a war gamer, yeah. if you're a war gamer and suddenly something happens, like you drop your case and the models yeah. go all over the floor, and you go, oh, <laughs> now I know how he feels. <laughs> Or, you know, someone puts your models in a microwave or something, you know. Yeah, oh, exactly. No, you've melted yeah. them. Oh, <laughs> my, precious. <laughs> my precious. And essentially, at the end of that, he essentially, obviously, he also released during the 13th Black Crusade a few things by choice to obviously assist the Imperium with defending Cadia. In a, yep. I believe there was Greyfax. 
I think this is also mm-hmm. when he released the Ultramarines that we had in storage. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, the Vostrians as well, Vostrians I believe. As well. Yeah, lots of guard regiments came out to assist in the at the fall of Cadia. Um, and yeah, that, obviously that assisted in trying to aid the escape of the Imperial forces from the world. Um, and, you know, and, he, and, he, and, he, and obviously he worked with some certain individuals in these uh, black pylons. You know, he was quite friendly with uh, a man called uh, Belisarius Cool, if I remember correctly. Yeah, um, yeah, buddies. Yeah, I don't know if, but I think buddies is quite a strong thing. I mean, I think it was a mutual need for each other's assistance to uh, attempt to solve this particular problem. I, I think if you, mm. I think you'd rather collect him than be friends. <laughs> True. You've got to start your connection again somewhere. Yeah, you, so, really? I mean, Belisarius Cool would be a good start. I mean, yeah, maybe you add Gazgal Thracker in there, maybe a Primarch yeah. or two. Yeah, exactly. You've got to get the full set. <laughs> so anyway, that yeah, that's that's Trays in the Infinite in my and yeah, and I I like him because he's he's just he's like you said, eccentric, a bit different, and I, I like the I like the fact that he's just sort of going around going, oh, I'll have you, I'll have you, I'll have you, and yeah, you know, and not a lot of people can stop him to be honest, due to the tech he's got. So yeah. Yeah, nice, nice. Over to you, sir. Cool. Uh, right, so I've picked uh, Anraka the Traveller. I actually have a picture of him if you'd like me to put one up. Oh, go for it. Yeah, I'll chuck just, one up, Thomas. I'll, I'll pop one up so you can. Uh, Anraka, there he is. He's got his nice big blue. He's a bit thing. angry looking, isn't he? Yeah, his war side. Um, yes. So uh, he was an overlord on uh, a planet, um, I'm going to call it uh, Perea. Mm. Um, so his planet was waking up, poof, woke up, and uh, Amraka pretty much woke up, fully aware of what's going on, no fuzziness, no bedhead, and decided to go out and um, take a lot of his warriors with him, leaving his planet behind him. Um, he's also known as the uh, uh, Nomad Overlord. Okay. So he basically threw away his title. He went... I'm not interested in being an overlord anymore. I'm not interested in any of this nonsense. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to help other Necrons. So he then goes, to, he travels um, across a galaxy, oh. across the universe. I thought you were going to, to say he's become um, an Instagram blogger. Maybe. Uh, who knows? <laughs> Travel maybe we should, should hashtag. Um, <laughs> but he goes to other two worlds and he basically makes sure that they're, they're, they're protected they, they wake up properly, and then they're, they're back in the game, ready for um, the Necron species, the Necron race. He's all about the, the bigger picture mm. rather than his own personal glory. Um, and for um, payment, he just goes, just give me some warriors, give me some Lich Guard, and I'll be on my way. And most dynasties or most Tomb Worlds will kind of go, cool, cheers for your help, have some of these boys, <laughs> and off you go. Um, some obviously are a bit like, mm, it feels a bit kind of mafia risk. This, um, I'm not sure about favor what you're doing. for a favor. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, Raka maybe has to use a bit of um, negotiation and uh, gets gets what he wants at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. So he, he he normally has an army, and by the sound of it, this army is um, from different dynasties, uh, different tomb worlds. And he'll just travel from world to world helping them. Uh, his force isn't massive, so he, he doesn't travel with a massive entourage. Because um, I can imagine if you get if a Necron dies, like I said before, they go back to their tomb world. So he's going to have quite limited resources. So he tries to avoid conflict the best he possibly can, um, or uh, you know, overall fights, etc. Um, in battle, he's, he normally got his own Lich Guard. Um, Resting you with him, so uh, Lich Guard are essentially bodyguards for overlords, they are the protection unit, and he'll tend to be running alongside them. Um, he has got an ability, um, to take over enemy, enemy weaponry. Ah. So, if he gets close enough, he can use his command protocols to take over enemy weaponry and turn it on the enemy which is quite a nifty little trick, I think. Um, For instance, if you're charging towards uh, a Bane Blade, (laughs) suddenly the main cannon turns round and fires towards another Bane Blade. (laughs) Uh, It's quite a cool little thing that he's got. And so his overall thing, obviously, is that he wants to make sure the Necron species, um, or race, probably race more than species, um, ascends. Um, 
which we will probably see more of um with of course the the rise of the silent king and the return of him i think no i think they're going to go back to sleep yeah no it's all gone wrong He's definitely gone. Gonna so be... what, are you, what are you doing out of bed it's another yeah. 20 get million years back boys. In. yeah it's always <laughs> it's loose um yeah, he's going to be on board with that and uh yeah i, I really like him i've got so i've got the model unfortunately he's failed cast so i haven't been able to put together shame 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 but uh, i will probably um either try and repair and we'll get another one at some point um but yeah that is uh anraka hmm uh, what about your conflict, Tom? What is your favourite ne- necro well, conflict? I'm, I'm sticking with my theme. So we, it's, a, it's conflict involving Trezine again, because I, as I said, I did a lot of research. I tried to pull my research a bit. So mm-hmm. it's a very, it's not a very massive thing, but it, was, it struck me as quite an amusing one in the way that it kind of turned out. And it, and so essentially, it's called, it's the Raid on Solmance or Solmanes, Solmanes or something like that. Okay. And essentially, uh, there's an inquisitor called Valeria who was uh, in the area of this tomb of this world. Uh, I mean, Valeria also. in the area. Yes, uh, and and it, it obviously they didn't know it was a tomb world. By the way, they went down here to try and work out why this planet, which looked like it was amazingly still stocked with you know minerals and all this kind of stuff, was no one living on it. You know, um, so they they went there and they discovered endless catacombs under the surface, and they started exploring through it. There was some regiments of Katachan jungle fighters with them so they brought some yeah some good uh, some good guards with them good stock yeah um and essentially when they were down there this tomb world wasn't quite as asleep as it seemed and warriors scarabs all these other things started coming out of pretty much every location too and they were completely ambushed and outmatched right from pretty much from the beginning um and essentially Valeria had a bit of a fight with uh, what seemed like a normal overseer, I think, if I remember correctly. I, I don't recall the name exactly. However, killed it, and then essentially from behind it, another body came up completely, sort of absolutely fine, and and then she stabbed that one, and then, th- and then essentially another one turned up, and it was, it was basically it was obviously Trazine using body doubles to essentially survive, um, from what I understand, um, and in the end. During that particular fight, it gave some of the Imperial forces enough time to get out of the tomb world, although not a lot of them at all, really. Um, it was it wasn't really good for them in this case. And then obviously this conflict, they left and they went, no, we're not going back there. That that that, that place is not the place to be at the moment. <laughs> so, so they all left, and then Valeria sort of goes back to her inquisitorial duties, and a few months or years, whatever later, she gets a um a hyper scroll, and it's actually from Trazine, and it's essentially a scroll um to thank her. For the Katachan Red Jungle uh, fighters that have been delivered to him, obviously he's put them in the collection, and he's just like, uh, "Wow, well, wouldn't you?" Cheers. You know, uh, there was also he also sent, I think, a personalised Tesseract Labyrinth attached to this, and I, I was trying to work out. I, I read a few things on it. I couldn't really work out whether um, I think she got entrapped in it but escaped, from what I understand. Um, because that was the, I think that was his little game with her. Because uh, mm. like I said, he's, he sent a letter essentially, and you can tell that he's goading her to sort of maybe bring some more collection to him in some way. You know, because yeah. he, he wanted the Catachan. That was kind of the point of it. It was quite amusing, and that, I, that's why I like I, I like that conflict as much as it's a, quite a small scale conflict. It was just quite funny. It was just like, mm. oh, I need some jungle fighters. Oh, we'll just tempt the English down there with some. It'll be fine. And then it's like, hey, yoink. Fine. <laughs> yeah, mine. <laughs> nice. See, that was my one. Yeah. yeah, I quite like him. He's a quite eccentric character. Yeah. Um, for myself, uh, I have gone with the uh, the first known or first recorded conflict um, oh. with the ones between the Imperium. Uh, so Sanctuary 101 uh, in the Vidar sector. Uh, it was uh, the Saltec dynasty. Mm. Um, so those who don't know Saltec are, are possibly the biggest, biggest dynasty going at the moment because i think what they tend to do is they tend to absorb the smaller dynasties and um that was said previously with uh Anraka, he's very selfless and puts the the race um above uh petty infighting etc yeah. um but imatek the leader of the um Saltec, is pretty much i would say the opposite he very much <laughs> is like the empire builder he's the one that wants the Saltec dynasty to be the best dynasty going so he'll tend to expand and conquer. And he's probably the most lethal um, Necron commander um, going at the moment. Anyway, so the Saltec dynasty are conquering through the uh, Vidar sector. And um, 
come across the uh, sister monastery on Sanctuary 101. You've done this on and, purpose. You've done this on yeah. Purpose. 101 <laughs> Sanctuary or Sanctuary 101, uh, either way. And um, basically, the sisters fight their best. They, they hold out as long as they can. Uh, and unfortunately, they do eventually fall when they're all slaughtered. Um, and gradually, there's like recorded footage of what happened. Uh, up until now, the Imperium have got no idea about the Necrons. Um, and you can imagine like, when you, f- you play a new, new army in 40k, Tom, like, an army you haven't played before. Mm. Sometimes they can feel almost uh, indestructible because you've got no idea how to defeat them. And they've got all these new tricks. And I can imagine the sisters um, feeling exactly the yeah. same. They've got no idea what these guys are or what they do. Um, and uh, gradually they're kind of taken back further inside the monastery and then eventually destroyed. Um, a little time later, Imperial um, investigators find the records and they start putting piece, putting all these small pieces together and they go back to the... Um, uh, back to Terra and say, look, this, there's this new race that's going. <laughs> um, they're definitely a bit of a threat. Unfortunately, Imperium being um, the uh, bureaucracy center, it takes a very long time before anyone in the yeah. Imperium outside of Terra actually knows anything about the Necrons. And just gradually the Necrons are just building, 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 and they're getting bigger and bigger. And the Imperium has no idea at this point because obviously communication bureaucracy is ridiculous within the Imperium. And this Necron force is just getting bigger and all these other conflicts are going on and yet they can't quite put their finger on it and what's going on, which I think is quite interesting because it just shows you the flaws within the Imperium itself. And then the Necrons are this massive force and they're just kind of getting bigger and bigger. Yeah. But yeah, that's my, my conflict. I liked it. I thought it was quite nice. Uh, obviously, the, uh, the sisters were the ones. And I believe when the Necrons uh, model-wise were first released, um, the sisters were pretty much released at the same time. And I believe there was a lot of stuff behind this particular conflict. Yeah. So, Tom, we've gone through conflicts. We've gone through characters. We've even gone through dynasties. Yeah. Shall we look at some of the models Ooh. that you can purchase? Yes. Um, I was just prepping a little bit of um, imagery. So it depends on where you want to go first. Well, Tom, do you want to go first? Okay. Do you want to go with Forge World? No, nah, let's, let's do normal Games Workshop first. Normal GW. Because actually, I think the Forge World stuff's actually pretty cool. We should leave that to the end. I think that's oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, um, well, well, for my first choice, um, this is purely... Um, now, I'm, I'm having to pick one here that isn't actually out yet, but it's a model that we know is coming. What? Um, well, it's the new Necron Destroyer. Okay, which one? The the one with the legs or the one with the massive gun? The, yeah, the one with the massive gun. So I'm going to put an image of that up here. I think a lot of people have probably seen this. Um, so I had to cut it out of the, one of the Games Watch ones, so there's a little bit of wording on there. I think I think it's, I can't even, you know, whatever. Um, I'll just expand that a little bit bigger as well, because it's quite small. Ooh, no, don't drag us around. Let's do the, let's do the image. So yes, um, obviously you can't see this, Dom. But, um, so it's essentially, obviously the normal destroyer, uh, current destroyer is essentially a floating kind of tank, hover tank with a Necron body attached to it. Essentially, I think it's the best way to, I can describe it. Um, and I think the current one, in my opinion, doesn't doesn't look that brilliant. A bit dated, unfortunately. It's very dated because essentially, it's, it, obviously, the way they did the guns back then, they whack, they put the um the little, little green rods little green rods in, which for, I think back in the day, I mean, that's a really good way to achieve that kind of effect. But you know, but looking at the current one, which is up on on your screens there right now. You know, it, this gun looks, it's got the triple, you know, four coils of green in the middle where it's been coloured in nicely. And it's it, it's huge and it looks like a, a weapon that can do some damage, how I would imagine a, a destroyer would do, I think. that That's that's why I think, uh, and I think it just as an updated model, it looks it looks really cool, in my opinion. And that's why I'm actually quite excited about some of these models that I've seen, because I think they, they just, they take it to another level. So yeah, so that's that's the one I picked for them anyway. That's my first one. So I think that the uh, the new destroyer takes it back to some of the original concept art mm. uh, that was released years ago, and it's obviously revisited some of this concept art and gone. Actually, that's pretty cool. Nice. Let's go back and kind of look at what the destroyer should be. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, it looks. It actually does look pretty nice. I do like it. Lots of new Necron stuff is brilliant. So Tom, my unit of choice yep. is going to go almost the exact opposite of what I've just said. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm gonna go with the Satan Shard of the Nightbringer. Nightbringer, yeah, I'll get it. I've got one here. One second, I'll pop it up. There we go. Oh, that's quite a big picture. There we go. It's there. It's there. The blue thing with the big pointy sword. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, the it's like or a, a glaive. Or... A glaive. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. It's a glaive. Yeah. A glaive. Maybe He's standing um, on some scarabs. Size. Yeah, yeah, I've got the model. I love it. Yeah. Uh, and what I like about this model is it's pretty old mold, actually. It's one of the first kind of mm. um, sculpts they had. It used to, have, used to be in metal, then it was in fine cast. And what I like is just the, whoever sculpted it clearly had a horrible nightmare, <laughs> uh, like a cold sweat nightmare, and then went, fetch me my notepad now. I need to draw something. Before and then when it's Games Workshop next, I went, I want to make this. And they were and like, this looks quite good. <laughs> yeah, it's just terrifying. It's yeah. a really terrifying, scary model in the 41st millennium. Very ghostly. Yeah, 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 it's quite spooky. And I, I love it. I think yeah. it's such a cool model. Uh, it's a little bit dated compared to mm. some of the others, but I, I just... I think uh, I, I think like it, it in its simplistic way, though. I know it looks obviously it's yeah. quite a simplistic model, really, because it's mainly mm -hmm. cloak and a bit of upper body, really. Yeah. But I think it, the effect it has is actually really good because you get that sense of something that's um, been quite tortured and also yep. kind of and, and quite scary, I think. Yeah, mm. Yeah, definitely. And um, I think the important thing to remember as well, obviously, that story-wise, the, the Necrons have been going on way before Mankind was even a twinkle in a fish's eye. Um, <laughs> and it, it essentially... The uh, the uh, uh, Nightbringer is deaf. Like a lot of species, a lot of races out in the the, the galaxy have got some concept of who death is, or you know, yeah. the end of time, uh, end of your being. And he obviously has been a great influence in a lot of species throughout the years. And I think that guy just emphasises death. Yeah, I mean, on the tabletop, he's not great, um, but he yeah. he is. A brilliant model and i yeah when i restarted my necrons i was like i need to get him um so yeah i, I really love that model and that's why i picked it cool. I, I do have another games workshop one if you want me to do another one if, do, do go for it Let's, i've got one more so yeah. my, my my second one um would be the um death marks oh yeah i don't know why i i i mean i like the model as well i love the fact they've got the single eye dead in the center mm -hmm. and it's but I, I love the idea of these essentially teleporting snipers <laughs> yeah you know yeah um definitely uh, and the fact that yeah their, their one goal is to get that one target on the you know, yeah yeah because obviously yeah. That's, that's, i think that's pretty much how they play it you, you mark something for death as well as their strategy oh, yeah they're basically yeah. um when a yeah. unit comes in from reserve you also at the same time you come in from reserve yeah and then you can have a turn of pow, pow. Yeah. um they're they're all right they're not too bad i think there's some some use for them somewhere yeah. Um, I still, I think if you focused on them a bit more, you could probably do something. Um, but uh, yeah, I quite like the, the law, like I was saying, obviously like Necrons have this kind of code of conduct and, um, the, uh, uh, death marks in particular are kind of frowned upon by a lot of the dynasties or a lot of overlords because they, yeah. they seem to be the un, ungentlemanly way of uh, combat. <laughs> Surprise! <The> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, essentially they are the assassins of I, the, uh, I reckon Trazine would like them. Of course he would. Yeah. If they could get something for him, <laughs> just teleport in, get me the cookie jar, and teleport out. Teleport out. That's all we need to do. One yeah. job. <laughs> no, yeah, they're really cool models. I like them. Yeah. They're very nice. Cool. Um, I mean, I could keep going. Well, we. Um, I mean, I do have some other ones here, but if you want to move on to your four job ones, that's that's cool. That's fine. Um, okay. Well, I'm going to go one more Games Workshop one, okay. and then um, hopefully I've got it because you only sent me one. Well, I'm going to go with Eva of the Flyers. Ah. The um, Doomside. Well, I, I mean, I do have... Oh, well, it, it does look a bit like the Doomside. It's the one from Forge World. I have a picture of that one. I will put a picture up for it anyway. Yeah. It's very similar in design. It's, it's yeah, the yeah, and shape. that's the main thing. It's the cross, yeah. the cross on is yeah. um, the main thing I love about it because the kit itself, um, if you actually ever get to make one, it's such a simple kit. It's such a nice kit to make and um, paint and uh, I would quite happily have easily half a dozen flyers, uh, neck on flyers because it's so easy to do, they look cool and they're pretty terrifying as well and I think that's the thing about Necrons in general like I was saying obviously about um, the Nightbringer yeah. that they've got this whole feeling of death and destruction and I can imagine those things just zooming across and um, being able to do things that other uh, races wouldn't be able to do in their aircraft because obviously they're not 
held back by the. I did just the, send you the picture, by the way, on your WhatsApp. If you did want to have a quick look at it, if you hadn't got it up in front of you, so. No, I, yeah, it's it's yeah. nice. I, I've, I've just, seen just, I've seen just, many of these yeah, yeah, these just, guys just, yeah. as my time on Forge Road. I'm like, oh, should I? Should <laughs> yeah. I? Or I actually, I actually think I prefer the Forge Road one. Actually, I like the split, I like the double split crescent on it. So you have got like the outer crescent and then the inner crescent. I think I, like, yeah, I think that's that pretty cool. Really, um, really nice. Just makes it look um, cool. Yeah. So then, shall we go into Forge World? Do you want to pick that as one of your Forge World units? No. Oh, okay. I don't. I have another one, actually, that I, I picked because it's a more recent one, actually. Okay. Uh, it was the, and I'm, I hope I'm going to say this right, it's the Sephrotec. Sephrotec, the big... Big old yeah. walker thing. Big walker thing. And this is purely on a looks thing. I just love the look of it. I think it, it's very kind of spider-esque a little bit, but at the same time, very mechanical. You know, yes. and, and it just it, and, it, and obviously, I know the Necrons are getting some new walkers soon as well. Obviously, mm. or walkers slash monsters, whatever they are, tri-legged things and yeah. big War of the World style looking things as well. Um, but I think that looked quite. Um, I personally think it just it just looks like quite a nice weapons boat kind of thing on on legs. So yeah, that, that with my one, I would personally pick from Forge World. So yeah, like, it's I'm quite right. a, like a completely unique kind of silhouette yeah. and profile, isn't it? You just yeah. look at it and you're like. That's definitely Necron. You don't look at it and go, oh, it's Marine, maybe? Or is that no, Orc? No, it, it, you instantly tell that is a Necron device just by the centralised part of it. I think it's got that yeah. proper bulky look to it's it. It's very nice. Very nice model. Okay, and I have your your one queued up. So... Go for it, Tom. Ba-bow! Canoptic Tomb Sentinel. And I, I picked the one with it kind of rearing up. So, yeah. Um, um, so I've got two of these, and... Um, when I started my Necrons again for um, 7 for 8th edition, I, I think can't it was remember eight, which. Mate. I think it was yeah, eight. When, I, when I first got back into them again, I, I looked at the Forge World web website and the Necrons don't have a great deal of stuff, um, but that just stuck out to me. And I was like, oh my goodness, these centipede looking creatures are amazing. Um, so I got two of them. Yeah, um, I, I haven't got them anywhere near me at the moment. Sad face. They're Could cool. be crawling across the, across the wall. I like these too as well. I think they're just, and yeah. yeah, they're so cool. I mean, modelling them. Um, don't get me wrong, they are horrible to glue. <laughs> is, it every leg? They, is it every, every leg? leg every leg. Every leg you've got to glue. Leg. Yeah. Okay. I mean, mm. like you can model it. So the cool thing is you can model it and sculpt it because you can. Like, every bit is kind of separate, so you can kind of get some so nice little poses. Vertebrae on it, basically, so you can. Yeah, of, and yeah. you can do some nice stuff. It is just hard work. There is a lot to it. It took me ages to glue because I do a bit, leave it, and do a bit, and yeah. I must admit, though, the thing I like about these is that it kind of crosses that organic to mechanical look in a very cool way. It's the same with the scarabs. I quite like the scarabs because they yeah, they look like they're little organic things, but yeah, they're actually metal mechanical creatures yeah and, uh, but they seem to cross that line a little bit to sort of look in that manner yeah and i think that's exactly of, yeah. and I, I yeah i mean they, they play or they play okay i wouldn't say they're the game changing kind of thing no. um but i think they've got the exile cannon so if i remember rightly the exile cannon is essentially like a vacuum cleaner as in like oh if i don't want that there i'll put it into another dimension it's so a horrible strength ten thing, isn't it? If I remember yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. So it has got the capacity to. Do I do some recall damage. you having very mixed results with them. If yeah. I'm totally honest, yeah, just but once that... again, it, it, I've got them really like the, yeah. the deep strikers, but the the aesthetics mm. is what what sold them to me. Oh, I right. really love the model. Well, and they the are my. Now, so there we go. That's all the forge rod ones. Yeah. So Tom, if someone has watched this video and thought, "Wow, they've only butchered most of the lore." Um, I really <laughs> want to start a Necron army. <laughs> right, well, now this is an interesting one because I, I did actually have a little look at this and obviously um, I'm not too sure about their starter set, to be honest. No? No. Um, I do have a picture of it here, actually, if we do want to put one up. Um, well, you, you have a look at the starter set. at the, mo the current starter set, though, mind you. Well, yeah, that's my point. And I, um, and I think, actually, cause I think you get some... Immortals, some warriors, and the annihilation barge. Uh, yep, an annihilation barge. Or you can turn one. that into the uh, the old chariot one. Yeah, the old chariot one. Um, so yep. you get twenty three models there. I just don't know because um, I suppose if you pick up the codex first, obviously as usual, as is normally <laughs> our first advice. I think you have to really decide on the dynasty you want to play before you even think about buying models for it, because it does change the way you probably collect and play it quite dramatically. I think. Yeah, I think um, the Necrons, um, from playing them, they're, the rules, they're, they're pretty 
straightforward in the rules and not that yeah. complicated. Like if you if you're a beginning player and you fancy Necrons, I couldn't recommend them enough yeah. because you're not going to be um, kind of overly confused with no. particular rules. Like you wouldn't if you're a starting player, you wouldn't want to try Tau or no. um, Aldari. I think Necrons are very straightforward how to play them. Yeah. Um, like I said, the starting set that, that for me has never really appealed to me. Mm. Um, because I never wanted warriors, so it's <laughs> that's my point. If you don't want, yeah, warriors, two thirds warriors, I'm not always wasting my and money. The other thing is, and then probably if you do want warriors, maybe you don't want immortals. Yeah. So it's kind of. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, Tom, you're right. Yeah, Codex. I pick what dynasty you want because the dynasties are all um, like probably you've noticed going through a bit of your research is yeah. you, you kind of the dynasties can be quite different in a lot of ways. They're quite focused on an area of the Necron yeah. play style, and that's actually one of the good things about them, in my opinion, because it makes you very clear on how you want to start that army. You know, oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. So you kind of, yeah, you, you go down a particular route and then you can go from there. Um, but, yeah, the, the and from my experience online, they're quite hard to get hold of as well. So from a collecting point of view, they're not as accessible as Marines um, because if you obviously, if you want to go on to eBay, you could buy all the Primaris Marines you want for <laughs> 20 yeah. And yeah, you're set up for life. Um, Necrons, however, are a little bit, in my opinion, a bit harder to buy secondhand. Um, and I think that'll uh, change. I think that'll change. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think probably actually, with the, the new reason, boxes coming out. Yeah, you I might think the reason they're probably a bit stuff. sparse is because probably not many people have been clicked them, or, or maybe don't want to give up that the, the, the models they do have because at the moment, I imagine there's probably possibly been maybe a little come down the availability in general. I would imagine because yep. of the they're preparing for these new this new release so you know yeah uh, definitely and I, I, they, they cut the supply a bit and because if they're going to do new models they would rather people buy the new ones obviously so yes definitely and i think a thing to remember as well like we're saying about marines for instance or like last last time we did space wolves and the space wolves have got several boxes already so you can kind of like starting box you can buy a marine starter box not a problem you can buy one of the um the um Dark Imperium box, you can turn to Space Wolves, whatever. Yeah. Necrons, at the moment, they've got their starting box that you've seen. They've also got the box coming out for whatever the new 9th edition release is going to be. Um, they don't tend to have many other box sets. Mm. I think they had... Um, ah, what was it? with The, the Italian box or whatever it was. Or the, yeah, oh, yeah, um, yeah. No, I know the one you mean. Yeah, they had the... Oh, with I the Armages. What was that one called, actually? Forgebane. Forge Bane. That was the one. I had Forge Bane. So I got a couple of copies of Forge Bane because I love, uh, at the time, I was looking for Wraiths. Um, so, yeah, except for that. And then that's gone. So, <laughs> yeah. as a Necro, you're quite, you're very limited on where you buy products from. So you tend to have to go to Games Workshop or other companies, yeah. Goblin Gaming, for instance. Yeah, who are they? Check them out. Um, <laughs> Check our link below, of yeah, course. Yeah, check our link in the description out. if you want to sort of. You know, yeah, just... help us out by buying yourself new models. So we want you to do. Have a nice time. Help me um, to help you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, it's quite hard to start Necrons um, model-wise. Um, Rules-wise, obviously, they're easy and straightforward mm. to do. Once you know what you're doing, go out and purchase but them. Obviously, from... at the moment, I would recommend not starting an army right now. No. I think you should definitely um, wait for this new codex, I think, if you're about to dip your Yeah, to yeah. I think yeah. what I can tell from the Necron stuff at the moment is everything that had a green rod is gone. Yeah. Um, anything that didn't have a green rod, obviously, is remaining. So your Immortals are staying, your Lich Guard are staying, your Praetorians are staying, the new apo the Apocalypse vehicles are staying, Death Marks are there, um, a lot of the other vehicles are there as well, but like your standard warriors, your destroyers, a couple of your overlords or lords, they've all gone. Mm. Monoliths obviously being redone. So give it a few months. Yeah. Ninth edition will hit. We'll end up with a nice new box and then start a Necron army. And of course, the Psychic Awakening book, which is going to barely yeah. have time to just dry, and then they're releasing a new codex. But from what I understand, obviously that's all usable. And I think they're going to be taking the best bits out of the Psyche Awakening books and putting them into the main codex anyway. So I, I wouldn't feel like you're missing anything out. In fact, you could almost say you don't need to get the Psyche Awakening book, but I suppose people who collect Necrons are going to get it because they like them. So uh, Yeah, and yeah. I think Necrons, I've had some love um, over the years. Yeah. They obviously haven't had as much love as other races or whatever in the game. But <laughs> they've had more, like I said earlier, they were released at the same time as Sisters. 
and you think how much love Necrons have had in comparison to Sisters. So they've definitely made an impact in the uh, 40k universe, both hobby-wise and lore-wise. I'm looking forward to seeing more of their armies about, in my opinion. I can't wait. Yeah. I'm looking forward I to am looking your forward. Army yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get those. People get, oh, who wants Necron half? I'll be like, oh, if I have to. Well, Dom, you know we're, we're good. We're good on this yep. already, you know. Yeah, so definitely. I'm down for, me, me and Vicky both collect Marines, so it's kind of Oh, like, two lots of Necrons two right lots of there. Necrons right there, exactly. So, yeah, you know. um, but I think we've covered everything, Tom. I think, I think we're there. This has actually been a pretty long episode, actually. Just, oh, well, I've just enjoyed it. An hour and it. ten minutes, mate. Oh, goodness. Well, if you've watched it all the way through, guys, yeah. and you want to see your particular faction come up, or yeah. another faction, um, please put a comment below. Yeah. Give us a like, uh, uh, subscribe, Definitely. if you haven't already. Share us about. We are possibly YouTube's best-kept secret when it comes to 40K <laughs> channels. Um, so, I mean, you can tell people if you want, or we can be... I remember, dead. people, beards in, <laughs> brushes and beards. Come on. Brushes and beards. Got, Come I, on I, Instagram. I've got to regrow. Got to regrow. Yeah, Sorry. yeah got to join the campaign, Tom. Um, anyway, yeah. this is Dom and... Tom! Well, that, way. that way. From Black Toad yeah. Studios. <laughs> and we will see you next time. Thank you very much for watching. Take, take care, care, everyone. Bye-bye.